This is a Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. This time around, we're going to talk about dynamic link aggregation. So dynamic link aggregation um, uses 802.3 AD as a standard, which the protocol is LACP. So the way it works is that um, uh, one end will send an LACP control packet or an LACP DU to the remote end, and it has to get a reply back in order to bring the port up. So the benefit to using Dynamics is that um, in a static environment, the, once you create that static lag and deploy it, you, if, there's, if the other end is not deployed or the cable's plugged into the wrong place or the other end is, is misconfigured, you can create a loop and uh, eventually bring your network down, um, whereas Dynamic Lag and LACP will health check the other end make sure that it's plugged into the right ports, make sure that it's, the configuration is correct, and then put the port into a forwarding state. So it protects you against those sort of issues. So in order to configure this, we're going to config T. Uh, we'll have to do both ends here. So we create our lag. Um, so you just say lag, you give it a name. So a descriptive name always helps so that you can look at it later. So we're going to call it 2. 7250-2, so we're going to identify what the remote end is of this lag. Uh, and then you've got a couple options. You can say dynamic, uh, which is what we're going to create. You've got a keep alive, which would be used in, in, in instead of UDLD in a multi-vendor environment usually. Uh, and lastly, uh, you can create a static if you wish, but uh, we'll we're just going to create a dynamic. And then you can, uh, you can assign an ID here if you want, but I'm just going to let the system give me an, a, a uh, generated ID. So, uh, so then I'm in my my lag sub configuration here. So we need to do a couple things. Um, there's many many options here, um, but what we what we must configure is the ports, a primary port, and then deploy it. Otherwise, the other things are just optional. So we will assign our ports to it. So ports uh, e one slash two slash one and then I can I can do a range here or I can just do a, another port so I can put in multiple ports so I'm going to say e one slash two slash three because they're not um, um, in a group together uh, if it was you know one slash two slash two one slash two slash three I should I could have done the two but in this case I'm just going to add those ports and then I have to have a primary port so the uh, purpose of the primary port is a couple of things. One is it's where your primer, your broadcast, unknown unicast, and multicast go. Um, and secondly, it is where the configuration goes. So if I go in and shut down the primary port under the interface, it's going to shut down all the ports in the lag. Um, so it it is the controlling port, if you will. So we're just going to set a primary here. Um, and then you give it the port number. So you'll notice that there's no E here. You don't do a primary Ethernet 1 slash 2 slash 1. Um, so that's just something to watch out for. And then lastly, we need to deploy it. So we just do a deploy here. And it tells me that it's deployed successfully. Okay, so I'm not worried about a loop, even if my ports were up. At this point, they're never going to go into a forwarding state because the remote end has not yet been configured. So uh, if we do a show lag, um, well, we'll just do a show lag. I could have done a specific one. Um, so what we see here is we built this lag 27250-2. It's dynamic and it's deployed. Here's my ports, 121 and 123. Um, so I got two ports. The primary port is 121. Um, the key here, you could specify a key if you wish. I let the system create a key for me. Um, and then we can look at our port. So in this case, my ports are down. They're physically unplugged at this point. Um, so I don't see a speed and duplex, etc. And then under the configuration here, um, the operational state is down. So um, there's a couple of different choices for operational state. So the next thing I'm going to do is plug those cables in and we'll see what happens. So keep in mind that the remote end is still not configured at this point. So those ports should not go into an operational state. And they do not. So you'll see here that the operational state, now that those ports are up, you'll see they're, they're up and the state is blocked. So they're LACP blocked. They're blocked by link aggregation. Uh, and they're in inactive state. So if we actually go and look at one of those interfaces, show interface E1 slash 2 slash 1, for example, the port is up, 
the line protocol is down because it's LACP blocked. And, and we can see that how long it's been blocked for it. So, so it's been LACP blocked for 28 seconds as of right now. Um, you'll also see down here, it's a member of an active trunk port and who the primary port is uh, and what it's configured for. So active versus configured in these two. Okay, so we've got one end up and running and it's waiting for the remote side to come up and send an LACP reply packet. So I'm gonna move my console over to the second switch and we're basically going to build the same configuration on the remote end. So config T, um, we will do a lag to 7250-1, so I remember what it is, and assign it as dynamic, okay? So now again, we put our ports in. We have this, we're using the same ports in this case, one slash two slash one, excuse me, E one slash two slash one, E one slash two slash three. We assign our primary one slash two slash one. Again, no E there. And then lastly, we deploy it. So it says it's deployed successfully. So now, if I look at the show lag output, um, so I have my lag deployed, dynamic, it's deployed. Here's the ports, port count two. Here's the primary port, it's hash based. Uh, same key. This key, of course, is uh, locally significant. So it doesn't matter if the key does or does not match on across the two sides. That is only for the local device to differentiate groups of ports from, from each other. Um, and then we look at our ports, one, two, one, one, two, three. So they are up and forwarding, uh, full duplex, 10 gig, trunk number one, um, VLAN ID, and then if we look at the ports, um, we can see that they are now in an operational state. So this means that, that my trunk is now up and working as opposed to it being inactive, uh, meaning, meaning LACP blocked or down, meaning the ports are physically down for whatever reason. Uh, and then lastly, if we look at the partner info and PDU statistics, we can see that um, we have sent and received, we're sending and receiving LACP uh, DUs. So we know that that's operational. And then if I look at the interfaces, one slash two slash one, rather than saying LACP blocked uh, under protocol, the port is now up and up. But we see uh, active trunk here with the primary port and configured port with the primary port. So um, that's it, relatively straightforward. Thanks for joining.